you think the session went now that it's been over for a couple hours? <laughs> well, I'm glad it's over. <clears throat> it was uh, it was a difficult session to manage. Uh, we had had some issues, revenue issues. Uh, uh, certainly, we had to look at uh, at health and welfare reform, and, and we looked at reform of education as well. Um, and and those are three three ball tough balls to juggle at the same time. And um, what do you think the next step for the education reform plans is going to be? Well, it's going to be implementation. Uh, the the task force has to get get uh, get named and has to get established. Uh, it has to develop a plan of action, and uh, and then start working towards uh, uh, implementation. Uh, they have a a 12 month window to come back to the legislature. Actually, it's less than 12 now, but they've got they've got to report in the, in the next legislative session on their progress. And it, it's my vision that that task force will will uh, uh, go on through at least the infancy of, of the, uh, the reform changes. I mean, bringing technology to the classroom and, and, uh, and bringing uh, uh, professional development to, uh, so educators know how to use the technology and effectively incorporate that technology into their lesson plans is, uh, will be a monumental task. And it, it has to start with the task force. I'm already hearing anecdotally of teachers um, trying to figure out how they are they will make themselves eligible to earn the uh, the pay for performance bonuses, and that's a good thing. Uh, they will show those teachers that want to will, will will figure out how to make that work, and will be actively involved in in uh, trying to improve their student performance and, and taking leadership roles and uh, and we will have an, a chance to keep some of the teachers in the hard to fill positions that we may have lost to uh, private sector There was that New York Times article that uh, Superintendent Linda talked right. about um, how he wanted four online classes to be at least the starting point for the discussion. Well, and understand that that interview <clears throat> was done several weeks ago. Oh, okay. uh, that wasn't a, a current interview, and it wasn't that long ago that we were looking at four online classes. Um, I don't think it's a done deal that the, that the uh, the State Board of Education is going to mandate four classes. Uh, they may make some kind of mandate, but remember, uh, whatever they do in rule takes approval from the legislature. And if, if they come out with something that, that, that the legislature collectively feels is unreasonable, it won't get passed. And what else is implementation of the the program mean? I mean, is it how you get the laptops out to students? Uh, you know, what what else are the problems that, that have to be solved? Well, a big issue is going to be teaching school boards how to reassume responsibility of their elective office. They uh, um, what they've dealt with through collective bargaining and master agreements uh, will now have to become part of their policy. So uh, we're talking about a, a, a task of developing that policy and implement, I implementing it um, that, uh, uh, that trustees have not uh, had the need to do for many, many years, at least in some districts. So that's telling them, like, I mean, it, it seems like school boards have a little more 
power or, or, or authority and, and what some of the bargaining could be. So that would just be telling them how to how to use the their bargaining power. Well, all the uh, uh, the master agreements basically are going to d deal with salary and benefits, bell times, and things like that that are in master agreements now will be set by school boards uh, through uh, uh, adoption of policy. So uh, it will be solely their, their authority, and I'm sure they'll take input from, uh, from stakeholders on, on things like that when they develop policy. And it may not be much different than what's now found in master agreements. But again, the authority for development of that policy rests with elected officials, with local trustees. Um, are you worried at all about um, the referendum talk or the effort at uh, recalling uh, Superintendent Tumlin as it comes to implementing the program? You look at the, uh, the, the bar for initiation of a referendum, it's 47,000 or something like that. If every teacher in the state signed a petition and had three other people sign it, they could reach that bar. Um, and it could very well be that the referendum will, will show up on the ballot in November of 2012. I think the greater issue is whether it will be approved when it, when it shows up there. Uh, we're talking down the road uh, um, essentially 18 months and and in that time frame, uh, as as the reform uh, package starts becoming implemented, I think the the majority of the voters in the state are going to realize that this is something that should have been done, probably should have been done a decade ago, and will embrace it. And what other segment of our our economy or our, our society uh, has not embraced technology. And I know I'm painting that with a broad brush because there are specific districts and classes in, within districts that, uh, that are up to speed on state of the art, but largely they're not. And, uh, and getting this process in, in getting the legislation through your committee, you had several long uh, hearings. I, I sat through most of them. Uh, are you happy with the process of, of how the legislation got put together and, and changed? If I had been a creator of the legislation, I may have created it differently. Uh, I may have put it out there uh, farther ahead of time and allowed uh, for, for comment. Um, <clears throat> what I question is whether, uh, uh, whether the final uh, draft would have been, been different. Um, we asked for uh, suggestions on how to improve reform. And all we got from stakeholders was raise taxes. And that was not on the table. Was there any other legislative efforts this session that you were uh, happy with or proud of? Well, the way we handled the budget I thought was <clears throat> was very good considering what we had uh, uh, to use. There were some things that uh, uh, that I tried to do that I didn't get done, uh, things that I'm going to have to come back to next year in hopes of making progress. What, what's on that? Uh, um, there were a couple of issues with the Industrial Commission. Um, I believe that there's a uh, there's a charter school that's uh, uh, that has set policy for uh, enrollment uh, that that may be unconstitutional. 
and that's going to have to be addressed in the next session. Um, was the Industrial Commission issue, is that some of uh, relating to the, the fees that uh, workers or the charging no. for workers' comp, or is that something? No. Uh, there has been a, a proliferation of self and self-funded workers' compensation programs uh, in, in, in the public entity sector uh, over the course of the last year. And I have concern that elected officials are making decisions to self-insure without knowing the full repercussions of taking that action. And uh, I had a bill that would uh, require some additional information be considered uh, when they submit an application to the Industrial Commission to be self-funded um, and it came to the uh, House Commerce Committee late in the session and they did not have the will to deal with it this session. So it's something we're going to have to work on next year. Um, my hope is that the Industrial Commission uh, will will uh, embrace the the suggestions that I made and, and make that requirement because I think I think they have the ability uh, uh, to uh, uh, at least ask for that information. Do you know why those agencies are doing? I mean, this is the first I've heard, I'm hearing about. But do you know why the agencies are doing that? Is it is it cheaper for them to self-insure? Uh, and you know the the the, the very best workers' compensation program is a self-funded program, as long as it's funded properly, and as long as you have property, proper uh, loss control and, uh, and claims adjusting uh, services, and as long as you have enough of a reserve. Um, but uh, uh, sometimes those program, uh, the programs submitted may not May not have all those uh, those elements, <clears throat> and I can understand why elected officials would look at the potential for a saving um, in the short term without completely considering the long-term ramifications of that short-term saving. Is it any office in particular that you talk about? What, they're not offices within the state. They're they're public entities. Uh, there's been at least one school district that's done this. Uh, I think a couple of counties and a couple of cities. Okay. Is there anything else that's already you know is going to have to be changed next year in the legislature? I don't off the top. I expect it. No, sorry. I was going to ask you more about next year, but that's. Right. I, think that, <laughs> I think that's all. Thank you for talking. To me. You're very welcome.